We now have one of the largest Tamil diasporas in the world. Tamil Canadians have collectively been a voice for their brothers and sisters on the island to ensure that peace and reconciliation is achieved for all those who no longer have a voice since the armed conflict. I personally and vividly recall the protests in 2008 and in 2009 when tens of thousands of Tamil Canadians were marching on the streets. In my own riding of Mississauga Moulton, I met with many friends, friends that are in the audience here today and members of the Tamil community who were deeply affected, who were deeply affected and wounded by the acts of genocide. And last Monday, I met with one of the doctors who was a witness to the atrocities committed on the island. Survivors like him should inspire us all to work for justice. I made a commitment to the community in 2009 and I want to recommit today to you. That as long as I have a voice, as long as we have a voice in Canada, we will ensure that we speak up against atrocities committed in Sri Lanka and stand with you shoulder to shoulder to seek accountability. In 2014, the United Nations Human Rights Council established an investigation on war crimes and crimes against humanity during the armed conflict and in 2015, they concluded, the United Nations concluded that war crimes and crimes against humanity were in fact committed on the island. With the conclusion of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights Report, Resolution 30.1 requires the Sri Lankan government to establish a hybrid legal mechanism to ensure those who were responsible for these atrocities should be held accountable. Yet, yet the path to reconciliation and the commitment from the government of Sri Lanka has been minimal. The Sri Lankan government continues to ignore its commitments with a lack of progress on accountability lack of political will and no proactive action to ensure domestic laws ensure that war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide are made illegal on the island. With a growing rift on the island, with fear and hate and division amongst its civilians, there's very clear challenges. The level of dysfunction on the island is at an all-time high and will continue to spiral if not addressed in a peaceful manner. The government of Canada stays committed for its call for Sri Lanka to implement its obligations under Resolution 30.1. And ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues to reaffirm time and time again the need for accountability in order that peace and re reconciliation may be established. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues to be the only world leader to voice concern over the Sri Lankan's government lack of progress towards accountability. He has been consistent, he has been clear, and he will continue to raise his voice. And ladies and gentlemen, my good friend and colleague, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Christia Freeland, has addressed the Commonwealth and the United Nations Human Rights Council on a number of occasions to reiterate the need for accountability and the Sri Lankan government and to make sure to make sure that the full implementation of the UN resolution 30.1 takes place past March my dear good friend and many of you know who he is and he's standing right beside me my good friend Gary Ananda Sangri member of parliament for Scarborough Rouge Park represented the government of Canada at the 40th session of the Human Rights Council in Geneva he continued to advance the government of Canada's message on the lack of progress in Sri Lanka and implemented 40.1 to reaffirm and further signify the commitment to reconciliation on the island. And this past Wednesday, on May the 15th, my colleague, many of you know him as well, he's a local member of parliament from Scarborough North, Sean Chen, he proposed a motion in the House of Commons that called upon the United Nations to investigate because as the young individual so eloquently mentioned, 
we need an international body to play a leadership role. And we called into case and asked the United Nations to investigate into the allegations of genocide against the Tamil civilians in Sri Lanka. Regrettably, the motion failed to receive unanimous consent, but make no mistake, we will continue to pursue this endeavor. Our efforts will not stop there, because we as a government will continue to pursue accountability and justice for the Tamils in Sri Lanka. And we must all continue, and we must all continue to condemn all forms of hate and extremism and continue to seek truth, justice, and guarantees of history not repeating itself for those that continue to be attacked and marginalized on the island. We will continue to stand together with our Tamil brothers and sisters in Canada and on the island to ensure accountability, justice, and the protection of fundamental human rights and freedoms. Thank you very much.